In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how we can use Lightroom 3's various tools to correct an overexposed image and bring back a lot of the detail in the sky, sharpen, take a look at noise reduction and just generally improve this photograph. To start off with we're going to take a look at doing some basic edits before we take a look at actually correcting the tone and the, uh, the actual image itself. So one of the first things we want to do is actually correct the sloping horizon line and that's achieved quite easily. At the moment we're in the develop module inside Lightroom and the first thing we're going to do is actually switch up to the crop tool and that'll open up various different options to us. We're not interested in cropping the image at the moment, we just want to correct the angle that it's being displayed at. We can do this in various ways but we're going to do it in a simple and quick way by clicking on the straighten tool, finding the horizon line, clicking and dragging the line right along the horizon and as you can see that automatically rotates the image to minus 1.86 degrees. That's now corrected our horizon line, cropped the image automatically for us so we make sure we don't actually worry about having an uneven image and we're now ready to move on to take a look at some of the dust problems we have on the image itself. Now we've corrected the actual horizon we can just click on the close button and that will actually do the crop for us. So you see our image is cropped in, our horizon line is all set up exactly as we'd expect it to be. None of these things are written in stone and we can easily jump back at any point and look at the history. So you can see if we take a look on the left hand side under the history panel, you can see every single stage that we've actually worked on with this image from right the way back to where we imported it, right the way through the entire lifespan of this, whether we open the image up once or a hundred times and make edits every single time. Within Lightroom we can go back and we can jump back to any single point within the image history since the point it was actually imported right back at the beginning. Okay, so we've done the basics. Let's take a look now and actually get rid of some of these little dust bunnies that I can see up in the top left hand corner. If I just zoom in, while they're not particularly evident right now, when we actually correct the sky and improve the tone within that, you'll find that these little dust bunnies will actually stand out a lot worse than they are at the moment. But as with most things with this, we can easily correct that by just using the spot removal tool. If I click, I can adjust the size of my spot brush just by using the square brackets left and right to in increase and decrease. Alternatively, I can just use the size and opacity sliders from within the brush palette on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click over the dust bunny That'll give me the target point as the second circle, at which point I can easily just move that around till I find exactly what I want. I can click on the second one and do exactly the same thing. I can adjust until I find a spot that works perfectly for this particular little blemish on the image. Now if I want to just check the rest of the image, I can just simply hold the spacebar down and I can actually move around my image. So I'm just going to have a quick look around see if there's anything that stands out. Don't forget the beauty of this is the fact that if we don't see anything now, we make some alterations to the image and come back and find that there's discrepancies, blemishes, anything at all. We can easily switch back into the, the heel tool and adjust the image and get rid of any additional problems we may find later. But all looks good. I click the close button, that'll close the tool down. And we're ready to move on. Let's just zoom back out. Now, next thing we want to do is actually make some basic corrections to the overall image and then we can come back in later on and do some selective adjustments to the sky to bring some real definition out within those clouds and the beautiful blue sky we have there. So if we take a look at our basic palette on the right hand side, you can see we've got various different options. We can adjust the temperature of the picture, we can adjust the exposure, the recovery to bring back any blown highlights, the fill light to sort of add a flash effect to any dark areas, the blacks to increase the intensity of any black areas within the image, the brightness and contrast, clarity which will adjust the contrast within the image making the dark areas darker to give a sort of nicer definition to your image, the vibrance which will just increase the, the, the saturation slightly of the colors and make them more vibrant whereas the saturation itself will just make a very harsh saturation increase to the entire image generally you tend to stay away from adjusting the saturation too much because it can be a little bit overpowering. So let's take a little look. At the moment we know this image is overexposed ever so slightly. So if we go to the exposure slider and just bring that down slightly, we bring a little bit of definition back into the sky, 
we bring back some detail into the horizon line where we kind of lost all that and we just generally tone the image down ever so slightly downside with that is you kind of flatten the image out a little bit make it a little bit lacking in contrast so what we can do is we can use the clarity slider and really bring back some of that punch and if we increase the vibrance ever so slightly just to put a little bit more power into the color not as powerful as the saturation let's take a look at what I mean if I just increase the saturation we just start to get very gaudy unrealistic colors so something to be be careful of use it to tweak ever so slightly but don't go overboard with it at any point any time you made any changes to any of these sliders you can just simply come back double click on its name and that'll reset it to its zero point okay the basic image is looking a little bit better now let's go back and take a look at what it looked like before we made any alterations when we made the exposure alteration adjust the clarity pour some vibrance in just the saturation and then reset the saturation so the beauty of the history states on the left hand side is you can see if you take a look at the the navigator preview window at the top every single alteration we make as we step through this history will show you what it looked like at any given point within the entire life lifespan of this particular image inside Lightroom post crop after the import angle adjustments etc 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 fantastic little thing that I think Photoshop could definitely learn from Okay, I'm generally happy with the way the image is starting to look, but the sky really does need a little bit more punch in it. As we get closer to the horizon, we lose any real power within that particular uh, area of the image. So what we can do is, we can actually selectively edit parts of the image. And we're going to affect this in the same kind of way as if we use a graduated filter when we'd actually taken the photo. So if we select the graduated filter tool, and then simply hold the shift key down the keyboard, click and drag and as you can see we're getting a sort of graduated filter effect going down the picture. Anytime we want to adjust this we can simply come over the little circle in the middle reposition that as we see fit, go to any of the lines and we can adjust the length of the gradient so in other words if we want to have quite a, a harsh quick gradient effect we can simply drag these lines closer together and as you can see we get a very quick fade off within the actual gradient whereas if we have the lines longer we have a smoother transition between the light and the dark areas so that works about right for me I'll we'll, we'll stretch that out a little bit obviously this isn't quite as powerful as if you use your masks with inside Photoshop but it does give you a quick way of editing and working with images now once we've got this graduated filter in there we now have a range of controls that you should be used to exposure brightness contrast and so on pretty much the same effect we have in the basic palette but now they're only going to affect this graduated filter area so as you can see if I start to increase my exposure only where the graduated filter effect is in place is being affected let's just reset that and the same will go for any of the other effects we have on there or either the sliders so what we can do now is we can actually adjust these independently of the remainder of the image and a smooth transition will go between where we've actually applied this graduated filter so we can create some very nice effects bring some detail back into the sky adjust things again and again and again so we've got exactly what we want and as you can see every time we make an adjustment on the left hand panel we've got under the history states you can see every single thing we've done every adjustment every tweak so we can jump back to any single point within this entire history of this particular image as we make the edits. So what we can do is we can adjust the brightness and the contrast. Let's give it a little bit more contrast. It gives it a bit of punch up in the sky. Don't want to go too far, make it unrealistic. And we can adjust the saturation ever so slightly to give it a bit more blue back in there. And if we use the clarity, which we've but fantastically on skies you can see what happens is all the clouds really start to stand out and the whites in the clouds really punch away from the, the blue background we won't mess with the sharpness we can leave that and sharpen the entire image later on but if I use this little toggle switch we can take a look at what it looked like before and after there's the image without the graduated filter 
there's the image with the graduated filter. Let's take the exposure back up ever so slightly, looking a little bit unrealistic there. Okay, let's take a look at that again. Without the graduated filter, the sky pretty bland, fairly blown out, especially on the horizon line. And we bring it back in, put some real punch back into there, which is fantastic. Now, obviously, the negative effect of this is that the tree has got a bit dark towards the tip of it, but we can correct that quite easily. Let's just say I'm happy with the alterations I made there. Click the close button, and we've now got a lovely looking sky. So, before and after. Okay, so how can we adjust the actual darker area now on this tree that's been affected by the graduated filter? Well, that's pretty easy. Let me just zoom in. And what we can do is we can choose the adjustment brush. Now, the adjustment brush works in a very similar fashion to quick masks in Photoshop. We can paint on an effect and then we can adjust only that area. Let's just take a look at how that works. So if I choose the, paint, the adjustment brush, you can see I've got the radius of the brush and I can paint over the area that I want to affect. Now I'm not going to be too choosy about this, but you can see that I've painted over part of this tree. If I start to adjust the exposure, you can see that where I've painted has started to lighten back up. Again, let's just switch that off, switch it back on. So let's just zoom back out. Bear with me. So what I can do now is I can just reduce the size of this brush using the left bracket. And now when I paint, I'm going to be painting with that same effect. So I'm going to be painting with the exposure adjustment. And if I adjust the exposure value, where I've painted is affected. And as you can see, the rest of the sky totally untouched. So let's just say I'm happy with that now. And I'll just click on the close button. Let's take a little look. Before and after. And as you can see, we brought back some of the, the detail back into the, the tree where we'd lost that from the, the graduated filter. Okay, we're almost completed with this image. Let's have a little zoom in and take a look at one to one and see what's going on with any noise in the image. And what you can probably see up in the sky, we've got these sol solid blues fading through to the whites. We've got a little bit of noise in there, nothing much because the image was shot at ISO 200. But you're going to get a little bit of noise anyway. So let's just close the basics panel down and let's just go down to the details panel. And this just gives us some control over sharpening and noise reduction. So you can see we've got noise reduction, we've got luminance and we've got colour. Luminance at the moment is actually set to zero. So if I start to increase the luminance, we should start to see any noise up in the sky starts to reduce. Like I say, there isn't a huge amount of noise there, but we are seeing some nice reduction in any of the noise that's up in the sky. Obviously, the trade-off with this is you start to lose detail. So if we come down to where the tree line is, I take that back down to zero, you can see we've actually got nice detail in there. Whereas if we start to break the luminous up, we lose that and we soften the edges. So it's really one of those things where you've got to find the happy medium that works for you and the particular image you're working on. So let's just take that down to around about 15%, 15 to 17%. That works for me. Now the next thing we can do is we can actually apply some sharpening to this image to bring back some of that lost detail. We've got four options available to us and what we're going to take a look at working with is the amount and the masking. Now before I go any further I want to show you something with masking that actually makes your sharpening life a little bit easier. If I hold the Alt key down on the keyboard and I drag that masking slider I can see in much the same way as you see with some of the other filters in Photoshop, I can see what's going to be affected. So these white areas are the edges that are going to be affected by my sharpening. Now obviously, I want the edges to stand out to give me the best effect, otherwise what's going to happen is if we have it quite low down and almost everything is going to be sharpened, any noise we see in the image is going to be intensified and any rough edges are going to stand out even more so. So what we tend to do is I'll tend to increase the masking up to around about 70% so I'm finding the actual edges of the image 
and then I'll apply my sharpening. So now if I start to sharpen, we're only actually sharpening the edges as opposed to sharpening the majority of the image. Now for me, I'll tend to find that I'll put minimal sharpening inside Lightroom or if I'm using Adobe Camera Raw with Photoshop and what I'll actually do to sharpen the image is I'll actually go into Photoshop itself and use the Smart Sharpen tool or various different methods to actually sharpen the image because I tend to find that you'll get better results working in that fashion. But obviously if you're dealing with just Lightroom and that's all you have available to you then those tools are going to work fairly well for you. So let's zoom back out. So there we go. We say we've got the finished image there. We've gone through right the way back Right way back to the beginning where it's imported. That's what we started off with. Okay, not very straight and a little bit bland. And we've gone through various different options to actually end up with an image that has a lot more punch to it and a lot more interest. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please stop by the WZ2K forums and leave some feedback. And uh, we'll see you next time.